Leaders pray first. That's something Ryan Skoog has learned firsthand. He and his co-author spent three years traveling across six continents and meeting with top leaders around the globe. They discovered the number one factor driving radical transformation, extraordinary prayer. Author Ryan Skoog says the secret behind extraordinary leaders is prayer. Yet oftentimes, many leaders neglect this practice, which can have disastrous results in their personal life and their organization. In Lead with Prayer, Ryan reveals prayer habits of world-changing leaders and how to build a culture of prayer wherever you lead. Well, it's a fascinating book. Ryan Skoog is here with us now, and we welcome you to the program. It's great to have you here. I'm so honored to be here. Oh, the spiritual habits of world-changing leaders. There are lots of leaders, but yeah. not all leaders are world-changing. In, in fact, you say that leaders have a prayer problem. Yeah, there's a, a major foundation in America that did a six-figure study on the prayer habits of leaders in America, and the results were so disconcerting that they never published the study. Wow. The person who founded it said, uh, this is one of the most disappointing studies I've ever read. And wow. so we, we set out on a journey to say, we know there are praying leaders around here. And in fact, where we found incredible praying leaders was the global church. Yeah. yeah see, the global church is exploding in a way that we've never seen. In fact, missiologists say they've never seen the numbers coming to Christ that are happening yeah. right now. Yeah. now. And we started trying to unpack why is that? And instead of finding a leadership principle, we found it was a prayer life that was wow. fueling this incredible explosive growth around the, the globe. And so that's set us out on a journey saying we want to learn how leaders pray. There's a poignant uh, anecdote in your book about your dad who had a startup business of his own and, yeah. and you know, really poured himself into it for mm -hmm. a decade. And then he had a Fortune 500 company offer to buy it for like a big sum. Prayer changed his answer to that. Yeah, it was one of those moments that every entrepreneur dreamed of. And he went to pray and the Lord said, don't do it. And he obeyed. And six months later, that company declared bankruptcy and would have wow. taken him down. Wow. And 10 years of work would have been lost. And 10 years of work was saved by one hour of prayer. Yeah. And so truly the idea of saying, is it worth it? Prayer versus productivity. It's always worth it. Well, and you talk time. about, you know, you just mentioned one hour of prayer. When you talk about praying, I mean, there's practicing the presence of God. He's mm -hmm. with us all day, all yeah. the time, always available. Yeah. But there's a deeper kind of prayer that you're talking about in here. Yeah, as we started interviewing leaders around the world, we found something amazing, and that's that most of their prayer lives looked similar. Wow. They looked a lot like each other. Someone in a refugee camp and then in the middle of a difficult country and a New York financier, any leader that was intense about their prayer life, from Francis Chan to Mother Teresa, their prayer lives looked similar. And the thing that they all had in common was it was friendship first. It wasn't based on just going through and praying through lists and all these things. It was spending time yeah. abiding in Jesus and carving that out, scheduling it, crafting a day with God. And, and really understanding what abiding means, sometimes being quiet, just enjoying being with Him. Absolutely. In the world today, that's a very hard thing to do because everything's rushing and pushing, mm -hmm. and maybe that's the enemy's greatest ploy to keep us from the kind of prayer you're talking about. Absolutely. Yeah, the, the first interview we did was with someone named Rosabelle who'd served for decades in a war zone, and I asked her about her prayer life. She goes, oh, I just love Jesus. She just glowed. And she said, when I was 18, I had no money, but I wanted to tithe. And so I figured the only currency I had was my time. So wow. I started praying two and a half hours a day, and I've been doing that the last 30 years. Come that was the beginning of our journey in learning how to pray from extraordinary leaders. Talk about the two training grounds for praying leaders that you discuss in the book. Oh, certainly. Yeah, the, the first one is to sit at the feet of Jesus and to learn to pray like Jesus. And then the second one is to really learn, it's more caught than taught, yeah. is to really learn from the stories of leaders who have wrestled in prayer and who have crafted their day to be with God and what their evening habits and their morning habits and what does it look like through the afternoon to really craft a day with God. And those are the, it's been beautiful to realize that you don't just read, but you need to practice yeah. 
prayer and practice some of these habits. And, and all of these habits that we saw from these leaders around the world, we made each one of the ones that we saw a chapter and they have a tool at the end of the book to be able to teach people to practice these habits. I love the way that you laid it out. I, I couldn't stop reading the book. It was so fascinating. It, and you talk about leading with prayer and you talk a lot about leaders, but shouldn't we all pray like this? Absolutely. Jesus said, if you abide in me, that's where the fruit is. And if we're not seeing fruit, it might be because we're not learning the secret of abiding. You had a situation with your daughter um, mm. while you were going through a, a situation with your family, and then your daughter began having these awful graphic nightmares. How, yeah. did, how did prayer change what was going on then? Well, it was during COVID, and it was a difficult time in our family, and my daughter started having nightmare after nightmare every single night. And they were horrible. We, we rescue girls from trafficking in our nonprofit. And she said they're demonic dreams where the demons would come and Dark. say, we're going to torture the girls in Nepal and you can't stop us. Mm. And she would wake up even puking sometimes. They were so intense. And she'd wake up morning after morning saying, Daddy, make them stop. Make them stop. And so I spent night after night getting used to the smell of my carpet, laying on my face in front of her door, crying out to God to rescue my daughter. And at the same time, when it was really intense, uh, it was a Monday and we showed up and we didn't have payroll for Friday because of COVID and with our business. And that was the most difficult time in my whole life. And I cried like I've never cried in my whole adult life. And I saw a, a picture of Jesus and he was crying. And he said, Ryan, you never cried alone. Yeah. And that moment just overwhelmed me with the love of God. And the fact that no one's cried alone, that Jesus has cried with everyone who's ever cried. And that, that night we had communion and oh. she, was, she was completely set free of these nightmares and yeah. we, our business was rescued, but it, that didn't matter. What mattered was that experience with Jesus was so precious. It was yeah. worth the challenges that we went through. We are in a, a time, it seems, of great spiritual challenge mm -hmm. in our country, in the world, but in our country specifically. How yeah. do people become praying leaders? <laughs> yeah, well, what we, the first thing to do is to realize it's not something you just go out and run a marathon. Mm -hmm. yeah. You go out and just run a mile. It's a lifetime. And, and so it, learning now, starting now to have those practices and to, to value it, schedule and craft a day with God. Put it in your schedule and start spending time. I have these prayer cards that I've created and started just trying different prayers from confession to the exam and to Lectio Divina, learning all these prayer habits from all over the world. Yeah. And we have tools at leadwithprayer.com to help people get started. Oh, it's so personal. Lead with prayer, the spiritual habits of world-changing leaders. I tell you, I couldn't put it down, and I think you'll love it as well. It's needed. It's available nationwide. You know, it all begins with each one of us individually. Get a hold of this book. Ryan, thank you. Thank you awesome. so much. Wonderful to have you here. So great. I'm just an honor.